All right, save current progress. You haven't missed anything, YouTube. This is literally, <laughs> literally where we left off. Trial part two, episode one. How many save files do we have? We have 20, plus an auto save. 22nd November, 11.30 a.m. Supreme Court Judici uh, Adjudicator Defendant Sick Antichamber. That's not work, Reno. It's okay. That was superb. Uh, my heart was in my mouth the entire time. It was almost unbelievable. I mean, looking at you there. You're drenched in sweat, your eyes popping, you were your knees knocking, and you were grinding your teeth. It was a grim sight, but before I knew it, I started finding inconsistencies in the testimonies. I think you might have a natural talent for being a lawyer. Forget it, it's terrifying. If I go through this, I don't. If I get through this, I don't ever want to sit inside of a courtroom again. <laughs> anyway. It looks like we've exposed your phantom lady at last. <laughs> it's Giselle Pratt, a student from Great Britain. Is she? That's what I was trying to tell everyone from the start. Dr. Wilson wasn't alone. He was with a young woman. There was a young woman with him. Like I've been saying all along. Yes, you have, haven't you? I don't want to be overly confident in the courtroom, but... I might not be overly confident in the courtroom, but my powers of observation are one thing I'm sure of. Yes, I can see that. So, about this young gentlewoman. <laughs> As to our detective friend, he was, she was hastily escorted away from the scene, it seems. Did you see what happened with that? No, I, I didn't see any of it. So someone got out of the restaurant myself and then I'm pointing at Dr. Wilson's table and noticed there was a gun laying up, lying on the floor and just after I bent down and picked it up... I didn't have time to think about where the sound of the gunshot would come from. The waiter ran over to me looking as white as a sheet. He bundled me into some sort of small pantry. We missed to the kitchen. I was thinking by the detective, he apprehended his suspect without a moment's delay. And because, yes, and because I was shut in the pantry, I had no idea what happened outside in the dining area. Ah, there you are. Well done, both of you. <coughs> Professor Mikotoba. Well, it seems I was right. The pair of you make an outstanding team. You exceeded my expectations, I have to say. Yes, it seems you planned this from the start. You arranged things so that I wouldn't be able to act as a lawyer in this trial. Our modern country is still in its infancy. Our justice system even more so. Which is why... I firmly believe that we need to send our brightest young stars overseas to learn all they can. I wanted to avoid a situation that may have resulted in your study tour to Great Britain being cancelled. Well, that makes no difference. Warrior or otherwise, I'm the kind of, if I'm the kind of man who can't help his best friend and for the worst crisis of his life, I shouldn't waste everyone's time by going to study overseas anyway. What? What are you saying, Kazuma? So that's your stance. I was afraid you'd feel that way. Kazuma? Kazuma! Well then. Looks like it all comes down to you, young man. To, to me? Yes. You need to prove your innocence and uncover what really took place in that restaurant. I must say, I very much want to know the truth. After all, I have a personal connection to this case. <laughs> I think I might said the same thing earlier this morning, didn't he? Um, if you don't mind me asking, Professor, did you know the victim? Yes, I did. As you're probably aware, Dr. John H. Wilson was a visiting professor at York. It was I who invited him. Oh, I see. 
I, I didn't know that before. Anyway, you're about to go into battle. The victim uh, was a university professor from Great Britain, a well-known one at that. Naturally, our government is looking to identify and punish the culprit as quickly as possible. But let's not forget who we're going up against. This gentlewoman whose involvement our police bureau went to extraordinary lengths to hide. Yes, and I'm sure the prosecution will be using every tool at their disposal to quash your case. I have no doubt that you pair will put up a good fight right to the last. Best of luck. Thank you. Now then. To run, you need to run an errand to the university at once. Something I think we may need. Of course. Good luck, Cousin Masson. <laughs> Defendant Naruto! Court recess is over. Please make your way back inside the courtroom at once. It's time. Let's get back to it, partner. Let's get in there and deal a decisive blow. Before those old fossils know what's hit them. Oh, um, Kazuma. What? Thank you, really. What for? Well, if you hadn't said you believed in me, then I'm probably sure I would have already been I'd have already been found guilty by now. Look, I have faith in you. As a lawyer and as a friend. To me, that means a lot. If I found guilty in this trial, he's really going to give up on his dream of studying with Rod. That's kind of true, friend. He knows. So this just a, isn't just so this isn't just my battle anymore. Whoever we're up against, we absolutely cannot afford to lose. But all right then, I'll say the thank yous for after the trial. You can treat me as one of those su ukoi sukiyaki meals. I hope. Oh, you can treat me to one of the. I, I completely misread that. You can treat me to one of those sukoyaki meals I learned from UA Cafeteria on University Street. With an extra large portion, of course. Supreme Court of uh, Courtroom 2. Court <coughs> hereby resumes the trial for Yonosuke Naruto. Professor Aochi, uh, Prosecutor Aochi, rather, have you managed to subpoena the witness? Yes, Your Excellency, against all odds. Thanks to a certain young stripe, the prosecution is now rather pain under rather painful scrutiny from the government. Uh, sorry. Let the government scrutinize. That's their job. It's nothing to worry about. It's highly unlikely that the good relations we forged with Great Britain will emerge from this sky trial unscathed. Will you still think it's nothing to worry about when the new treaty breaks down and our nation founders? It's we flounders. Again, terribly sorry. But the friendship between our nations is really so fragile that the treaty isn't worth the paper it's written on. You really have nothing to worry about, Ryomasuke. What do you mean? A secret trial, anxiety over some foreign government's opinions, a bungled investigation, missing witnesses? Is this what our nation's justice system is? Is this the Supreme Court of Japan or of England? Shut up! Shut up, you jumped up rookie boy! You and your friend know nothing, nothing of the situation our nation finds itself in. By aligning ourselves with this great world power, we've become strong. Diplomacy has never been more critical. Steady political maneuvering. That what? What is the spelling? 
Manoeuvring <laughs> is what will secure our futures. I won't deny that I'm no expert, but I'm just a student, and one who could arguably study harder, too. But standing here now in our Supreme Court, there's one thing that I feel very strongly. Which is the first up with the truth in its justice system is a country with no future at all. Let's head to the end of Despite the wide-eyed look of horror. You little brats! Thank you, gods. This, of course, is the pinnacle of our nation's injustice system and leads us solely to the pursuance of the truth. Without in mind, this trial will now resume with the next witness taking this day. Pardon me, I had to take a sip of drink. Um, the witness, uh, the visiting student from Great Britain, Miss Giselle Brett. Yes. Your Excellency! Like it is to walk into a fine gentlewoman to Japan and such a distant land. Tea, somebody bring English tea in England. No discussion to take place without tea. Is that true? Is that true? No idea. So, uh, <clears throat> could we possibly trouble you to seek your name and occupation for the court? Of course. My name is Satoru Osanaga. I've been working undercover as the head waiter of Rakanaval. Uh, yes, you mean you know about, all about you already. It's Petro Osanaga. Where are your manners? In England, it's always ladies first. Is that true? No idea. More importantly, a little earlier today, you said something to me. You said your personal observation are the one thing you're sure of. Oh yes, I think I did, didn't I? Your description of this amazing sight was simply a woman. I'm sorry, Ryu and Osuke, but if I was off observation on the side, you're so as far as the description are so really lacking. Guilty. Dear lady, once again, if we may trouble you for your name and occupation, please. Oh, that's funny. They have it in illegible characters because she's speaking Eng in English and the game is in Japanese. It was based in Japan, so they don't understand her. Um, I'm terribly sorry, dear lady, but what? <coughs> the lady says her name is Giselle Brett. She comes from London. She's a visiting research student and currently enrolled in Yume University Medical Faculty. <laughs> oh my, what are we treating him with those tones of the delightful language of the British people? I'm afraid I don't understand a word you said, but it was as beautiful as a hummingbird's song. As well as I can tell. The truth was translating words faithful enough. Yes, I agree. <laughs> You'll obviously do fine in, in, in England, cousin. Well, English doesn't rattle you at all, does it? No, you keep clearly been paying attention in your English classes, Ryonosuke. <laughs> the court thanks this beautiful young, uh, beautiful lady for taking the stand. Now, uh, if we may trouble you to confer in something, Miss 
Two days ago at a restaurant called La, La Carnival, a grim murder took place. The court has been led to believe that you were dining there with the victim, Dr. Wilson, at the time. Why? I don't know why they would put all of that out front. They'd be like, he would just ask, hey, uh, three days ago, were you dining with a Dr. Wilson at around such and such time? Is that correct? She says yes. She said a lot more than yes. <laughs> this could take some time. So even though she's sitting here in Japan, she can't speak any Japanese? She'd like to apologize for disappearing from the scene. She says that she was due to make a presentation at the university, so she had to leave immediately. Aren't you told to escort her away from the scene? Why are you still lying? Can I get a copy of the testimony to present? <laughs> Interesting, you're the one who engineered her escape. I was just following special orders from the Bureau. Well now, dear lady, would you be so kind? Well now, dear lady, would you be so kind as to keep Mr. your eyes over this photographic print? Seeing as you were so for unfortunately present at the scene of the crime, could it be that your resplendent eyes caused the light of the wicked perpetrator, perhaps? Frightening and sorrowful sight. Do you mean to say? Yes, it would appear that the lady did witness the crime. She's gonna turn it on me, isn't she? <laughs> We've been through this like 18 times that I'm not. <laughs> when the accused standing right there in this courtroom shot the victim in cold blood. Order, order in court. Did, did you hear that, Your Excellency? We have an absolutely conclusive witness statement. Hmm. Well, it looks like it's clear now. Clear for our real enemy is. Unfortunately, I had to ask you to formally testify, if you please. Can I tell the court the exact nature of this frightening and sorrowful sight you described? slightly late luncheon with Dr. Wilson that day. The professor was able to eat, so I ordered myself for myself only a beef steak. <laughs> After a while, the accused came over to greet the professor, and they got into a fierce argument. Then, not long afterwards, the accused took the professor's gun and shot him right before my eyes. Gun myself, so I obviously couldn't have been the culprit. Hmm. This yes! is a continuing testimony. Uh, indeed. No, I, I didn't have any kind of argument with the professor at all. Objection! Quiet, you filthy wretch! Look at you, you black hearted black guard, and look at the snow white angel. I'm sure even a dark-minded scoundrel like you can imagine whose words the court is going to believe. Ugh. That, that wasn't even me reading that out loud. That was just me actually grunting. You're still making the same mistakes 
uh, Ryunosuke. <coughs> you mustn't blurt out when you're goaded like that. That is a lesson you need to learn. Uh, but it's, he's so annoying! Of course, I was at the scene as well. I took statements from this lady and the two witnesses who testified before and reported back to the bureau. It was decided that Miss Brett was not involved, so I let her go. The testimonies of the last two witnesses were completely worthless, however. Well, even so, on the day in question, the lady was wearing the same outfit as she is today. As you can see, there is no where about a person where she can conceal a firearm. Are you kidding me? The hat? The sleeves? The... everywhere else? I would think she could hide a gun almost anywhere in that outfit if she wanted to. <laughs> Unless... Uh, until the precise location where the witness... Uh, is so hidden a weapon can be shown, this is moot. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. So the witness's own words on the matter. Okay, that's ridiculous. If only I was allowed to lift up her dress, I could prove it. Don't think about doing anything rash. We must forget. I didn't fire the gun I picked up. There must have been another gun that day. Right about that. Which means this lady was hiding a gun somewhere. Yes, that's what we have to prove now. And to do so, we will need to pull her testimony apart. <laughs> the defense may now cross-examine the witness. I didn't like that grin. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. p.m. and uh, that's really quite a late lunch, isn't it? Objection! You don't keep up with the latest fashions from Britain, do you? Late lunches are in vogue, isn't that right? No. Decisive <laughs> <laughs> English. No, that's quite a thing. The gentleman is currently working in the victim's research laboratory, it seems. So it was apparent in the daily occurrence that they would lunch together. But on the day in question, the victim had another appointment at the clinic first. Yes, which we can prove from the medical report card that was submitted as evidence earlier. That's right. Miss Brett and the victim went to lunch the following the victim's treatment. Uh, which is why it was so late. Yes, yes, that all makes perfect sense. It's wonderful logic. What a shiny example of the English intelligence and this fine gentlewoman is. So we both arrived at the restaurant. What happened next? Yes! Only for herself, only a beef steak. It's unable to eat, you say. And also, I see just had a tooth removed in a hot clinic, correct? That's right. Um, you're supposed to actually check with the witness before answering. Was Miss Brett aware of that fact? It seems so, yes. She'd heard that, that the professor was to have some dental treatment. So that would mean. that it was you who had the same picture to me. Is that right, Miss Brett? That's right, yes. The part you have that er, uh, shows the table exactly as it was left after the horrifying events. Exactly as it was left? Damn me, what a harrowing experience. To travel uh, uh, to a distant island on the far side of the world and be embroiled in such a tragic incident. Have no fear, my dear lady. I swear I will crush the evil fiend that has subjected you to this terrible plight. Talking about herself? Look at this. God, 
wait. The wine glass is empty in this one. But here, there's still wine in it. So the victim, Dr. Wilson, had nothing to eat or drink at all? That's right, other than some carbonated water. Just water? Yes, the professor was unable to eat, but he had been given permission to drink water. So it appears that the diners toasted their lunch with a glass of water each. Hmm, they each raised a glass of carbonated water? What do you think, readers, about the witness's last statement? Very meaningful. That last statement of yours, Miss Gray, has a profound bearing on this case. Well, well, how fascinating. Do tell us, what is this profound bearing, hmm? The significance of this statement will become apparent when the time is right. The defense calls for the witness's last statement to be formally added to the testimony. <laughs> well, sidestepped counsel. Very well, Miss Brett. Kindly repeat what you just had to be added to your official testimony. Gladly, she said. That was brilliant, Kazuma. Kazuma, I'm gonna I'm to remember that one. Which one? The significance will become apparent when the time is right. I could really use that for us. I hope there are no some of your usual tips you're picking up from this experience on that real Sukei. So you and the professor both drank this carbonated water, did you? Yes. Being the waiter, I poured two glasses myself. I clearly remember doing so. Except when you're actually a detective. And the beefsteak. That was for you, Miss Brett. <coughs> <coughs> the lady says that she heard it was not customary to eat beef here until Japan had opened its doors to the world. Yes, that's true. What a frightful place, is the lady's opinion. I've heard it's not customary to eat sashimi in Great Britain. Now that's frightful. Every country has its own cuisine as long as people have food to eat. What does it matter what it is? True, I to think of it. The first time I tried carbonated water was much more of a shock than the first time I tried beef. Anyway, back to this witness's statement. Somehow, I feel like there's something out of place in, in what she's saying. We need to pounce on even the slightest thing now, because you never know what might lead us to our goal. The goal of turning this trial around. Understood, Kazuma. Uh if I present here. Does this work? Yes! That's it! Let me just confirm something, please. It's to do with this photographic print. Just a short while ago, you spoke of this print without, uh, show, er, you should have spoke of this print showing the victim's table at the crime scene. That was exactly as it was left. <coughs> that is correct, the lady says. Well, that is, it's, um, it's odd. Very odd. Dear me, what's odd is the difference's inability to express itself. Okay, what is it about the print that looks so odd to you? Well, obviously, it's... it's the cheers. The cheers? Miss Brent just told us that she and the professor said cheers of her glass of water. But if that's true... There should be two glasses on the table, not one. Aha! <gasps> You're quite right, Council. There's only one glass per 
I'm supposed to be impressed by this nitpicking over a mute. A munitier? Munitier? Minutier? Minutia. 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 <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that word. What possible difference does the presence or absence of a glass make on the case? Objection! Minutia, you say? Minutia? Could it be the detective here removed a glass from the table to conceal the lady's presence? Of course not. I would never do something so reckless. But there should have been two glasses on the table. Or you want to try to tell me that you can clink with only one? Because if, if so, please show me how that works. That'd be a, re a really cool party trick. You're quite right. I certainly took two glasses to the table. Inspector, what did the lady say? It would seem that it was Miss Brett who took the glass from the table. What? It was also terrifying, everything that happened. I panicked and thought I should try to hide the fact that I'd been there at all, she's saying. Good gracious. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. There, as I assured the court before, there's this is no no consequence at all. Oh please. We must remember that the student has just murdered the lead lady's luncheon companion before our very eyes. Who could blame her for concealing a glass or two in her state of disarray? You know, a whole ass res like restaurant glass. Those aren't like th those aren't small. I guess in this case they're wine glasses, but still. That's absurd. Oh, really? So we take it that you are now going to accuse this vulnerable young and beautiful woman of mischief? What? No, no, this can't be put, this, this can't be put down to mischief! I'd like to know exactly how the lady took the glass from the scene. It seemed that she slipped it in a small handbag she was carrying. A handbag, you say? Yes, Your Excellency. A small handheld pouch commonly carried by well-to-do women in England. So the beautiful lady has graciously slid swing how and why she removed the glass from the scene now. However, the fact remains that this glass has absolutely no bearing on the case. This student has been trying to confuse the court with logical reasoning, but in the end it comes to nothing. No more pretentious accusations, you've wasted enough time already. Indeed, the lady has offered a satisfactory explanation as to why she removed this glass. I think it was both of you instead of the matter to have no bearing on the case. Counsel for the defense, are you in agreement? Um, well, I don't know, really. If you want to pursue this matter further, you're going to need to show that it has some deeper significance. Yes, you're right. So she took the glass and there's... Uh, deeper So she took the glass away in her hand, but if there's any deep, a deeper significance there, it's the handbag. <laughs> Wait, the lady put the glass in her handbag, you say? Yes, do try to keep up. It's already been explained to the court that all English gentlewomen carry handbags for small items. Let me see. A little while ago, Miss Brett stated the following. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. But what if she forgot to what she forgot to mention was her handbag? In which case it would be perfectly possible to conceal a gun. You're right! Well done, partner. I had a feeling you'd pick up on that, too. What are you insinuating, you vile blackguard? It's really very simple. 
the gun shop was heard when the defendant picked up the gun from the restaurant floor. As he didn't fire that gun, we can deduce there must have been another firearm at the scene. The true murder weapon, if you will. You, you can't seriously be suggesting... For Inspector Hosonaga? Yes. Did you or did you not search the Miss Giselle Brett's handbag on the day of the murder? No, sir. I did not. As I thought. In other words, another gun, the one that was actually used to kill the professor, could have been hidden in Miss Brett's handbag. No! Order, order, order! What's the meaning of this, Inspector? The meaning of what, Prosecutor Alchi? Why on earth did you not have the lady open her handbag and show you the contents at the time? It's your bungling accomplice that she has to endure these uncomfortable accusations. Brilliant work, partner. Now I have a chance to expose the real woman behind the mask. Don't you think so, Kazuma? And don't you think so, Kazuma? <coughs> <coughs> Uh, the pro uh, I think Hosonaga is about to drop dead. Well, what a sorry situation. Clearly, you have no faith in the police. Huh? As I said, I did not search the lady's handbag after the shooting, simply because it was unnecessary. Unnecessary in what way? Not to thank the student lawyer, really. I have a piece of evidence here that I had completely forgotten about. This photographic print. <laughs> this print is a, pho a photograph that I thought would be prudent to take immediately after the shooting. As you can see, it clearly shows Miss Brett's handbag. Why, I know! You can see right through to what's inside. That's right. Apparently, Miss Workbats at these are the height of fashion in London at the moment. So the contents are clearly visible. Exactly. So there was no need to search the lady's hand. If there had been a gun inside, it would have been immediately obvious. Ugh! As you can see, there's nothing to imply Miss Brett's guilt here. Thank you for helping me to prove that now, oh, hold of son. <coughs> order, order! Mr. Tosanaga, you will submit that print as evidence at once. Certainly, Your Excellency. had long enough to cross-examine the witness council. Uh, objection? We just got new evidence! What? <laughs> Tattoo? Wait, what is this? from a plate? Oh geez, did she kill him in self-defense and that's what this is gonna turn out to be? The court has now been shown considerable evidence. And the photographic print just submitted into the court record appears to have no further significance. I'm satisfied that there is no longer any room for doubt in this matter. And I must make my ruling. Indeed, there is only one logical conclusion. That the pathetic rookie slumped over the... 
uh, the bench before us is the only possible perpetrator of this crime. No, just when I thought I was beginning to turn things around. Or a situation that I was at the start. Um, Kazuma? I'm sorry, you Yosuke. Not the cross examination of the witnesses over this way to force the trial to continue. What? You, you mean this is. <laughs> I must say, you put up quite a fight for a rookie student, but the weaker meet while the strong eat. I object because we're just given new evidence, and that allows us. And that gives the right to cro we have the right to cross examine. You were wasting your time. There's no way to defeat true justice. <laughs> I think you can chew onto your heart's content from the inside of your cell. This can't be happening. Am I really going to be found guilty of a crime that I didn't commit? Kazuma. This dream of going to study in Great Britain will slip through his fingers. Kazuma. What? Is there really, is there really no chance now of turning this trial around? You heard the judge. There's nothing about that last photograph the detective produced that we can contest, which means there's no basis on which to argue for the trial to continue. Very well. I will now proceed immediately to the ruling. I still haven't been given an option to object. <laughs> it seems we will be able to report to the British government on time after all. That smug little... We are also getting out. No, I haven't considered all the evidence was before me. Yes. I hereby find you. Yes. Wait, Your Excellency. We are almost okay. I, I don't think you can rule on this case. Objection! This amateur is, is, is getting tedious. When His Excellency deems that the trial is over, he gives his ruling. That is the most basic protocol of the court. Yes. Your Excellency, just a moment ago, you said this. As the photographic print you submitted appears to have no further significance, there is no longer there is no longer any room for doubt in this manner, and I must make my ruling. Now, that means that there was a problem with the evidence, some significant detail, I mean. Then the ruling on this case at this time would be out of the question. Attention! That's his plated straw clutching. Look at this photographic print. All it shows is the handbag of the gentleman was carrying on the day in question. There can be no problem with this evidence. <coughs> this evidence has one big problem. You better know what you're doing, Ryonosuke. Understand your objection, Council. Certainly, the new evidence submitted by the detective has not undergone the court's scrutiny. However, I fail to see how we can glean any new information from this handbag. Ha! My thoughts exactly. Really, the prosecution is becoming tired of this rookie's desperate wheezes. Yes, I am desperate, but this isn't a wheeze. There's something about this photograph which just doesn't seem right. If only I could put my finger on it. Big hint, look at the hand. <laughs> Very well, I will grant the defense one final opportunity. What? I be warned that if I am unsatisfied by your response here, the trial will be over with immediate effect. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Your Excellency. So, take another look at the photographic print Inspector Hosonaga submitted before. You will identify the, uh, for the court where in, where in this print we see the significant detail which you have alluded. And it's, they didn't go back to the old school system of it's actually just one attempt. Present. Yes. Look at this here. There's a very unusual mark on the victim's wrist. That is true. Looks almost like a burn of some description. Objection! Dear me, I was wondering what new pitfall you would come out with. A burn, you say, on the victim's wrist? It's 
So clearly that has nothing whatsoever to do with this mag with the magnificent lady's handbag. <laughs> yes, that is a burn mark. You're right. Go on, Inspector. The police coroner also noticed it when he was performing the post-mortem examination. It was seemed unrelated to the cause of death, so he didn't note it in his report. What did I tell you? In any case, we have no idea when the victim suffered this burn, do we? We know exactly when. And no way, no possible way of knowing either. The more I look at it, the more I find myself intrigued by the curious shape of this mark. However, as Prosecutor Alchie points out, unless a firm connection to the case can be shown, I cannot allow any time, further time to be spent on the precise details of this burn. Excuse me, Your Excellency. It would seem as Brett has a lunch appointment with the Dean and other university staff. She would like to know if she may be excused from the sand now. Uh, no, you're gonna stay right there, ma'am. Because this trial is just getting started, apparently. Oh, of course, of course, dear lady. We shan't hold you up any longer. I'm sure His Excellency is about to give his final ruling anyway. Give me a moment. I need to first off close my steam. Why is that still open? And also do this. Yeah, I thought I heard the audio break. You're thinking on this real Mosuke. Do you believe this burn does have something to do with the case? To be, to be honest, I'm not really sure. But I don't keep pushing, then it's all over. So I was thinking I should keep digging and digging, if I might uncover something useful. <laughs> yes, you're right. I am? If we can just link that burn to the case. If we can do that, we might be able to pry this the shutting back door, uh, ending door back open again. Just give up, Council. You can't possibly hope to do that. Indeed. Indeed. I'm afraid that without evidence, I can't allow you to pursue, uh, what is little more than conjecture. But if we had evidence... Oh, we've got evidence. Evidence that irrefutably linked to the burn to the burn on the victim risk to the case. Then you would allow it? I would, yes. To tell the truth, I hadn't noticed that burn. But as soon as you pointed it out, what I did notice was the color draining from Miss Brett's face. Really? I had to find some link between that burn and the case. This is the moment. This is the moment of truth. It's time to find some evidence that proves what that burn really means. So then, the defense will now present its evidence to the court. Evidence that demonstrates an inextricable connection between the victim's burn and this trial. Crime scene photograph. Yes! Present! What's this, counsel? Yet another print? That's the same one we've been mulling over for, for the past, like, several hours in-game. And IRL. Yes, sir, Excellency. I believe this photograph... Uh, uh, photograph prints are an amazing invention. But when we humans look at a scene, we miss things. <coughs> but in a photograph, things we may have overlooked at the time are recorded forevermore. Do hurry up, Rookie. What are you trying to say? To convenience this poor lady any further really would be quite inexcusable. And actually, we may need you to stay with us a little while longer if you don't mind, Miss Brett. See, it's clearly visible in this other photograph. How did the victim come to have that unusually shaped burn on his wrist? The reason is recorded here, forevermore. What? How? Attention! You can't fool me with your little bluffs, boy. If that's your game, then let's see how it plays out. Show the court exactly what you mean. What's in this photograph that explains the reason for the victim's burn? The searing hot steak plate? Yes! The... the beef steak? 
Actually, the point is the metal plate the steak was served on. Plate? Ah. Ah! Your Excellency, are you all right? As you can see, there's an emblem on the plate. I would guess it's some sort of trademark from the Carnival. Ah! The emblem on the pl the emblem on the plate. And the victim's burn. Are exactly the same shape. Ah! Yonosuke, you genius! You're spot on. Which means the victim must have suffered this burn while he was present at the restaurant. Attention! But but if that is even if that is the case, I can't know if it happened on the day in question or not. It could have been the day before or the day before or that. It most likely happened at some other unrelated time. Well, um, Can't actually examine this yet. Player, there's some medical treatment. So the person is killed. Shouldn't use anesthesia. I was hoping earlier dates would have more relevant information. That's why I did this. No food or drink other than water for three hours. First procedure while the seizure works off. Objection! Sadly, Prosecutor Alchie, the chances of that are extremely slim. Thanks. Why? The outline of the burn is clearly discernible. Such a serious injury would have caused quite a commotion in the restaurant. Wouldn't you agree, Inspector Hosanaga? I can't imagine having missed such a terrible disaster, certainly. But, but... I would say, looking at the picture of the wound, that it wasn't suffered very long ago. Although it's not particu a particularly large burn, it's extremely well defined, as the defense just pointed out. This was no mild burn, that's for sure. Can you be more specific, Inspector? Well, let's see. If the plate was around 90 degrees centigrade, a burn like that would have taken around 3 seconds. It's inconceivable, the victim wouldn't have let out a scream of pain, though. I've been investigating the restaurant for several weeks already, but I've not heard anyone scream at all. As the head waiter of La Carnival, I can testify to that without hesitation. But you... But he was on anesthesia! You're a detective, not a waiter! Which means yes. he's more qualified! <laughs> there you have it. Something isn't right here. This is a detective said. Anyone who burnt themselves on a piping hot plate for three whole seconds would scream in pain. There's no question of that. And yet Inspector Hasanaga never heard the professor scream. Not on that day, nor any before it. That's right. And the strange thing is, on the day he was shot, I didn't hear him cry out either. What are you suggesting? Well, if the professor had carelessly laid his wrist on the plate for anything like three seconds that day, that would be beyond careless, I think, counsel. And the rest of us in the restaurant, myself and the sergeant, the old antiques dealer, all of us without any question would have heard him scream. Wouldn't you agree, Prosecutor Jorauchi? Mm -hmm. Um, well, yes, I suppose. So the question is, why didn't a single person hear Dr. Wilson scream? <gasps> I, I almost don't believe it. No, Suke, don't you think? Can it really be true? 
I jumped to the right at a conclusion like this, but I'm starting to think that may that maybe I've been led into a terrible trap. There's only one explanation I can think of to make sense of this apparent impossibility. On the day of the question, when he suffered the burn to his wrist, Dr. Wilson hadn't noticed the burn. Yes, the professor being as absent as, as, as usual was unaware. What, what, that's not what we're after. You didn't even know the professor, and yet here you are with Mrs. Bumble. What? Uh, hey, did, did we, did we forget that he's on anesthesia? This is what I hate about these games. That's, uh, Suggesting. Yes, it's only possible that the man was already dead. Already dead? Knowing what we know now, it's the only possible explanation. When the beef steak was brought to Dr. Wilson's table that day, the professor was already dead. That's. that's. Madness! I agree, actually. What? He was on an he was on anesthesia, so he probably Order, 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 please. Council, explain this absurd notion at once. The victim was killed by a gunshot. That's right. Uh, that's absolutely right, Your Excellency. This this is just another ridiculous ploy by the rookie student, but clearly he has no grasp of the facts. Objection! I genuinely wasn't expecting this to be the right answer. <laughs> No, Professor Ouchie. It's you who has no no grasp of the facts. I, I beg your pardon. As soon as it became apparent that the victim had suffered that burn while at the restaurant, this whole case was turned upside down. Or have you not grasped that already? <coughs> your Excellency, the court must hear from this witness again. It's true, as we now believe that the victim was already dead before the gunshot was heard. It is highly likely that Miss Brett knows something about it. Incredible. I certainly didn't anticipate this sort of events. Did he, like, go into anaphylactic shock or something? When... Being, when being administered the anesthesia, so there's an entire conspiracy between two governments to pin it all on one random student? Jeez. I'm sorry to say this, Brad. That you will have to forget your lunch and engagement. Your Excellency. Justice system in our country may be in its infancy, but rest assured, all reasonable doubt must be dispelled before I am prepared to pass judgment. Thank you, Your Excellency. Yes, of course. I mean, I'd be delighted to help. Especially 
Love's relations between my country and your wives. Ah, uh, Miss Bespret, you speak Japanese? Well, of course I do. I'm sitting in your country after all. Then why haven't you been speak why have you been speaking through an interpreter until now? My mother tongue, the Queen's English, is most refined in the most refined and elegant language in the world. Isn't it true? I try to avoid speaking in your vulgar tones as much as possible. Since the men in these lands possess none of the chivalrous virtues of English gentlemen, so I can see that I shall have to lower myself to communicating with you all on your own level. Oh, uh, well, you are the epitome of a true English gentlewoman. We are truly honored by this, and this lavish consideration you so graciously afforded us. I see. Yes, Miss Bright, I will now ask you to justify in your own words about the events leading up to the death of the victim, Dr. Wilson. So we're finally going to hear her own words on the matter. And things are getting interesting, Ria Rosuke. Ugh. Sorry, I am. <laughs> Ugh. I'm, like, already exhausted, and it's only been, well, it's been three hours up time, but we're only halfway through, like, this, or we're only, like, an hour in on this episode on YouTube's end. Unfortunately, I have no idea when the poor man burnt his wrist like that. When the waiter brought my steak, the professor and I raised our glasses in a toast. As far as I've heard, this one report showed no other possible cause of death besides the gunshot. But there's some other way in this I've been taking about leaving a, a trace. Please do show me. But of course, this country should clearly investigate the damage. Probably will pick up on it anyway. <clears throat> that most captivating and beautiful testimony will go down in the Supreme Court's history. Thank you. Easy does it. What if that is the last time I want to sully my lips with the coarse tones of your unbecoming tone? <laughs> oh, forgive me. I do hope I haven't insulted anyone as she's been blatantly being a racist. Jeez. Not at all, not at all. It is me I'd like merely to hear you speak, dear lady. And it seems very clear from your testimony that this boorish talk of the victim's birds is utterly irrelevant. Sam. I will be speaking to your country's Minister of Justice about what has happened here today. The Minister of Justice? May that irritating little bully of a student be given the harshest punishment possible. Okay, so clearly she used some kind of poison to kill him. <clears throat> Which would explain... Examination for now. <gasps> I expect you've noticed that this little bully of a student, as you put it, doesn't miss much. I'm sure I don't need to remind you, Council, that this will be your final cross examination in this trial. If you have to demonstrate any problems with this witness's testimony, 
I will be ruling on the case immediately. Is that clear? Yeah, I was told I could see it as many times as I needed. That's me as the player here, as the person playing the, ca the game. Yes, Your Excellency. Then you may proceed to cross-examination. Alright, well, time to press everything. Give me a glasses and a stars. Yes! Let's start here. This is not survived before. You're drinking carbonated water, is that right? Oops. Dr. Wilson was only permitted to drink water at that time, if you remember. Which explains why he ordered that drink, correct, Winter? It's as as you say, sir. Well, then. Uh, oh, then? I don't know if the professor actually drank any of the water when I'm going to take to the table. I'm afraid I don't remember that. Mm. Damn you. Ah, I have enough English to understand. That, at least, for the benefit of the court, it means bless you. No, it does not. Uh, do you even see that opposite? Anyway. Let's go back and press this other one before we do that. Yes! <coughs> this hair was on the searing hot plate for three seconds. You can't have not noticed. Do you, do you think so? Let me ask you something. Sorry. Ever since I arrived in this courtroom, and even still now, the thumbnail on those on slightly black trousers of yours has been wide open. You can't have not noticed, can you? I mean, that's different. You're not making direct skin contact with that. Ah, uh, what fun. You had it realized. The lady is absolutely right. So, friend, you've embarrassed me as well as yourself. Why didn't you tell me? What? Dr. Erblesson was a true English gentleman. He shows honorable silence over a golden screen. Can we, her tiny brains, imagine such a thing? Oh, yes, I'm quite yes! angry, can I? Well, I can't! Anyway... Okay, I've already pressed that one. Yes! Yes, it's written here in the paperwork. Fatal hemorrhage from ballistic trauma. Yes. Luckily for all of us, the Colonel Lewis isn't going to kill us. And there were no other signs of trauma on the victim's body to indicate some other cause of death. It can only have been for the bullet from your gun that put an end to this innocent man's life. But it doesn't make sense. Sorry, I got a notification on my phone. The burn must have happened straight away when the plate was first brought to the table by the waiter. Yes, that's true. If it cooled even slightly, it wouldn't have been able to make a burn like that. And if the victim burnt his wrist on the hot plate as soon as it was brought out from the kitchen, he must have already been I dead by that it. point. And yet, the fact is that the victim was killed by a gunshot wound to the ch chest. Until you're able to show the court evidence to disprove that, this is a complete waste of time. I concur, Professor Oh, she is right. <laughs> yes! Aren't we leaving a trace? Someone is shot or strangled or stabbed or torn from a height. However, a person's life is taken, there are all these telltale traces on the body. Quite right, dear lady. And as all police forces thoroughly examine the body of the deceased, there can be no doubt. Isn't that right, Inspector Hosanaga? As I've said, I always aim for a flawless investigation. Hmm, there will be physical traces of all those causes of death, that's true. 
Okay, maybe there's some other way of killing someone that doesn't leave a mark. If heaven forbid you doubt me anymore, you're going to have to tell everyone how exactly you think the professor did lose his life. Otherwise, I'm afraid your argument falls on rather falls rather flat, does it? Oh no, bears the thought that this sweet young lady is innocent into question. On my honor, I and Taka Tsuchiyo Aoti will cut down any who dare cast such aspirations. Oh, we have killed someone that doesn't leave a we're just gonna trace we need some evidence to back us up here. Yes, evidence. Start everything down to the crime scene for later examination. In this country, you investigate what's in the scene of it, isn't that so? Quite right. La Carnival is open for business as usual today, just days after the incident. Exactly, which means that even if the investigation is in the right direction, <coughs> some final evidence may be lost. What? What's this about? Hold on. It doesn't. Even a Kurt and you, oh, to your naive detectives. It doesn't even occur to your naive detectives to try to preserve the crime scene. Can I like D over to? Can I click? Whoops. I'm trying to be as tactful about this as I can. Mm, you understand? Haha! <laughs> Killer blow. This lady's from Middle East. She's beautiful. Amazing. He's actually admitting that he's maybe flawed. That's just because you're uh, out is finally starting to see sense. I very much doubt that. Still, there's something about what Miss Brett just said. There was a moment before when something didn't quite seem right. What do you think, Ryo Musuki? I think it's going terribly. No matter how much I press her, I'm not turning up any new information. Yes, as I suspected. She's a tough witness. I want to find a way to break her testimony or the cross examination will be over. But that would mean I had to find a way. There must be some clue somewhere that was find a chink in her armor. Kazuma. What for you to be? There is one thing I noticed. Something that's been bothering me. Bothering you? Mm hmm. About Miss Brett? Actually, no. About the person standing next to her, Inspector Hosanaga, the detective. Yeah, it seems to react a little strangely to Miss. They seem to react a little strangely to Miss Pratt's last statement. Something for maybe significant. It might be. Uh, it might present an opening, maybe. All right, I have an idea. Try passing on that last statement one more time. You think so? You think so? But. This time, instead of targeting the woman herself, let's see what we can get out of the detective. Alright then, I wonder what Kazuma is thinking. Probably not soon enough, I suppose, once I press her last statement again. Oh, what the? Oh, I, I, I hit A instead of Q. Yes! There it is again. The detective's reaction is just the same as before. Why? Up until mm, how the detective has been in the sand and witness Brett as her interpreter. But things are very different now. In this testimony, the detective is just listening to what the English woman has to say. This could be a golden opportunity. What do you mean? When people are actually testifying, they're usually very careful not to let anything slip. However, when they're listening to someone else speak, you'll find they often let their guard down. You're right. Look at him. He's lost his own thoughts. It 
it's time to pursue the man and his train of thought. Sorry? Pursue? I'll explain how to do it now. You must be. It's all to with the witness marker. What marker? <coughs> the moment we're focused on Miss Brett, who's the person actually making the current statement. But by moving the marker left and right with A and D, you can turn your attention to other people in the stand. While you're looking at other witnesses, you'll be able to pursue them with the space bar. If you test the person at just the right time, you might recover some new information to pursue. If you ever notice a strange atmosphere among it's the people in the stand, take a good look around. Alright then, so first I should move the marker across A or D and focus on the detective and pursue the space and see what's on his mind. Yo! Wait! <coughs> <coughs> I'm pressing D and, it's, and nothing's happening. Okay, that took so long. Excuse me. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to shock you. I was lost in his thoughts deeply. It looked like you were thinking something just now, Inspector. Perhaps having heard what the lady next to you had to say? If there's something you'd like to say, please. Turn the Attention! What is the meaning of this? It's the delightful Lingo's woman who's testifying at the moment. If you can't find fault with her testimony, then the cross examination should be over immediately. Oh, is, is that how it works? Absolutely not. Hmm? The detective is in the stand, which makes him a valid witness. Yes, not to mention the fact that he's innate, uh, intimately involved with the case. Inspector Hosanaga. Yes. Do you have something to add? Well, listen to the statement made ju just made by Miss Pratt. Yes, if you don't mind, I would like to speak. The lady is right. Our country's police practices are not as modern as those used in Great Britain, which is why I, Satoru Hosanaga, always tried to make every investigation I'm involved with an flawless. What do you really mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. I won't have evidence lacking on my watch. I'm not afraid to take everything I can from the scene of a crime. It's reserving evidence, you see. I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief. I'm not ashamed of what I've done. <coughs> a crime scene thief? Well, that's a lady's remarks touched on the roof. Take this, for example. of carbonated water that I took to the victim's table on the day in question. Ah, uh, yes, and yes, it's also on this place. Having been opened three days ago, but it was carbonated water. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, there's somewhat in the bottle. I can see it. One day our police force will be among the best in the world. The time is coming, I guarantee it. <coughs> He drank the fucking carbonated water and poisoned himself. That's why he's... <laughs> That's why he's dying on the stand. <sighs> I can't can say I condone the witness's actions, but I do understand the sentiment. The court will accept the glass of... This bottle of water as evidence. Hmm, the spirit. Can you confirm this is indeed the bottle from which you drank on the day of the victim's death? Yes, it was that bottle. What was that about? Because her water here... Well, her glass is missing 
She hit her. That's why she hit her glass. Because she couldn't drink it. She seemed to avert her eyes when she answered the judge's question. Very well, counsel, you may resume the cross examination. And the inspector will kindly control his fervor. <laughs> I mean, the man has to cough, I mean, the man has to cough. I'm just gonna go for it here. Actually, hold on, let's examine. I want to make absolutely sure we're... Since carbonated water is the last drink he ever had, there's a little bottle, it's just putting water now, yeah. I'm not sweating, I'm sweating so much on this little part, I'll just have a sip of this key thing. No, you can't do that. For one thing, that's evidence, you can't be drinking evidence. Oh, you're right, I don't know what might be I do. Never see so many as in more ways than one. I wonder, could there be anything in this water? What's the matter? You've gone quiet all of a sudden. I think I might even just work something out. An interesting possibility. Okay, I'm... It's like... Uh, yeah, okay. Again, good thing I... I did that, because that might have... There might have been a flag in the in game coding to be like, oh, he hasn't examined this yet. So even though you you IRL are smart enough to put these together, the character doesn't know yes. that yet. What is this? this is the bottle of water? Actually, there's one method of killing a man without leaving a trace that comes to mind. Obviously, I'm referring to. Poison. Poison? On the day of his death, we know Dr. Wilson drank from this bottle of carbonated water. Could it be that there was poison inside? Could it be that the professor actually died after taking a sip from his glass? Order, order, order. And on that day, who was sitting at the same table as the professor and able to slip the poison into his drink? It's the only one person who could have possibly done it. Giselle Brett, it was you. Objection! This is outrageous to suggest such a thing without finding a scrap of evidence. You little rookie imbecile, have you ever even considered the delicate kit situation our country finds itself in now? Have you forgotten what we have, that we have only just signed an accord of friendship with the British Empire? I feel even the vaguest inkling that your her rash accusations could jeopardize the entire truth. Objection! <coughs> this is not a political arena. This is a trial to determine one individual's guilt with respect to one crime. What? The fact that this woman is British makes no difference. We are here to determine the truth. If I may, I will silence you forever. Forever, this is grateful. It is you who should be silent. Of, of course. Dear lady, where did that come from? She, she just snapped. I'm afraid I may have spoken unfairly before. 
offer my most humble apologies. I'm sorry, my lady, to what are you referring? I described your police force as inferior. No matter how inferior they may be, you still investigated this particular point thoroughly, I believe. The bottle, I mean, Inspector, and whether it contained poison or not. Of course. You, you did? Have you forgotten that what my guiding principle is already? I strive for a flawless investigation every time. I don't believe it. Naturally, we tested the inside of the bottle and its contents. And what did you find, Inspector? I would test for every toxin that's available in this country at the present time. We can find no trace of poison of any description in the bottle of carbonated water, Your Excellency. From this country? What about, uh, from England? What? Are you sure? The tests were meticulously carried out by the chief coroner himself. No! No! I'm very grateful to all of you Japanese. You successfully established my complete innocence in this horrid affair. Thank you. But, but of course, dear lady, the pleasure was all ours. I was so sure. This can't be right. Everything falls into place if he was poisoned. Thank you, counsel. I will point to the cross-examination as clarifies everything. As the prosecution evidence asserted, a shot to the chest from the Lucy gun is the only conceivable cause of death. Furthermore... The accused, who by his own admission was holding this weapon, is the only possible culprit. Done for. The court wishes to apologize for the great inconvenience this has caused you, Miss Brett. Oh no, I'm just glad the matter is resolved. Before proceeding, I must ask the counsel f of one of the defense. Do you have any further new evidence to present to the court at this time? Kazuma? I'm sorry, Ryo Masuke. I have nothing more. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I really must be leaving. And here's the objection. Hold it. Or the hold it. Please, wait. Isn't that... What's the meaning of this? Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susatum Ikotopa, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Ikotoba? In my darkest hour, nowhere left to go, she appeared like a bolt of lightning. And in her hand, she carried a small package wrapped in a... Roshiki Claw. <laughs> to be continued. Are you serious? All right, well. Part three. Let's go. BRB YouTube.